Hi, my name's Brian Lawrence and welcome to the show Motorsport Legends. What a fantastic program we've got lined up for you today and our special guest, may I please welcome and introduce to you Paul Adams. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. Uh, I think Andrew Cowan was leading the event. We weren't too far behind him in second place, but we caught a slower car on a stage. And for whatever reason, I don't even know who it was, he decided he wasn't going to pull over. So I was getting closer and uh, more frustrated until the end I had to assist him on one of the tight corners by just resting on his back bumper to give him a little shove so I could go through on the inside. And then it was raining and it's night time, but I discovered that not only had I lost all four of my spotlights, I'd lost my left-hand headlight and I only had one, red he uh, one right-hand headlight. And we came through and Don says, there's the 200 metre board and we're sliding through at about 90 miles an hour. And uh, what I couldn't see, because I had no lights, was there'd been a slip on the road. And the back of the car hit the slip uh, flicked the nose round, we went in for end and we went through the finish line in for end on the roof and I'm sitting there disgusted, Don sitting there upside down, flicks open the gearbox, gets out the minties and says it's moments like these we need minties. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Motorsport Legend Show, my name is Brian Lawrence and our guest tonight, Gary Pedersen. Somebody brought Peter Max um, a model of the M8 sports car. Mm -hmm and it was something you put together inside and when we opened it up it had this magnificent plan of that McLaren sports car. Yes. I couldn't to this day fathom what, how they would tell the whole world all the dimensions and sizes. Yep. <clears throat> they had all the ducting for it and where the thing, where the engine went and the position of the steering. It, it was a magnificent drawing. I've still got it. So you're able to take <clears throat> all of those. We got the drawing and, and blew it, it up the, to an inch to the foot. And turn it into the real deal. And, and then that's why it looked like the McLaren was built exactly the same. The measurements were identical. I lengthened the chassis to make the wheelbase the same. I, yep. I think I put four inches into the, into the floor to make it longer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's how that happened. Yep. And we had a guy called Ralph Cummings that worked for Richie Wheaton at the time. At, um, in the Glen Eden Motor Bodies, it was called in those days. Yep. And he was a magnificent craftsman, as you could see if anybody Beautiful saw the job. car. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> he he hand-built the whole thing, absolutely, all yeah. of it, yeah. So you won a national title in that car. That must yeah. have been a, a personal achievement, that another one of the many. October 1965, New Zealand saloon car racing changed forever. Why? Because of this car. This is Ivan Sedgden's Fleetwood Motors Mustang, and this is New Zealand's very first racing Mustang. This car started life as a 1965 K-Code GT Mustang. A K-Code was the fastest Mustang that you could buy directly off the showroom floor that wasn't a Shelby GT350. This car was to be built to FIA Group 2 regulations, which were in use at the time in Great Britain, Europe, Australia, and were to be introduced into New Zealand for the 1965-66 season. So how do you convert a Mustang road car into a full-blown Group 2 race car? Well, you pay a visit to Shelby American in California, buy yourself a stack of race car parts, ship them home to New Zealand, a few late nights in the workshop, and a legend is born. Ivan raced the car for two seasons, and it did actually show quite a lot of promise. He finished third outright in the Group 2 Points Championship, and he won his class. But there were problems. Handling issues, braking issues, mechanical issues, and these continued into the second season. And after a couple of big engine failures, Ivan had had enough. He decided to sell the car, complete with broken engine, and he walked away. Into Red Dawson. Dawson bought the car in 1967. He built a new engine for it and went racing the following season. He won a non-championship race at Levels Raceway, the first ever event at Levels Raceway. But in the eight round championship, he scored points in just one race. Mechanical failures continued with the car, and in 1968 he'd had enough. He decided to convert the car into a road car, and he sold it. For the next 20 years it lived an anonymous life as a road car, and it wasn't until Glenn Larson bought it in 1986 
that he restored it cosmetically back to the Fleetwood Motors colour scheme. But Glenn kept the car as a road car, and it wasn't until 2004 and its next owner, Neil Tollich, that it returned to the racetrack once more. Neil raced the car extensively in historic events both in New Zealand, Great Britain and Europe. In 2018 he sold it to its current owner, Sean McCorn. The Fleetwood Motors Mustang, a legend. New Zealand's very first racing Mustang. And it's still competing to this day in historic events up and down the country. Eric Mallard, well, welcome to the Legends of Motorsport, my oh my, and how much you have deserved this, this opportunity. And Eric, we welcome you here today with pride to Legends of Motorsport. Ron came here in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. He had been a motorcycle racer before the war. Yes. And uh, got captured at Dunkirk, because mm -hmm. when they put him in the army, they said, what did you do, do Sonny? And he said, I rode motorbikes. Oh, well, you're a dispatch rider. Okay. And, and he unfortunately got caught, and he did, did a lot of things uh, when he was a prisoner of war also, including becoming the camp forger, because if you escaped, you really needed documents, and mm -hmm. Frosty was able to steal these out of the camp office. Anyhow, um, he came to New Zealand, and he, one party was in business with Bernie Ecclestone. Yes. And, uh, and he came to New Zealand in the early 50s, and as you say, he had his Coopers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Moving on to about 1963 or so, mm -hmm. so the Grand Prix had been, had been going at, at Ardmore for a while, but you know it really needs someone to guide the place, and and uh, anyhow they uh, the then committee managed to come up here and uh, run Pukekohe. Hi Ginger, welcome to our Legends of Motorsport show. Um, we're going back into the lives of unique people and New Zealand motorsport people like yourself. Ginger, racing was your livelihood. Start money was key in those days. Did you negotiate your own deals? Yes. And how did that come about? How did you, it's pretty hard to put a value on oneself. I'd written to a lot of organisers yep. before I left, but when I got to England and I was staying in this flat, I, some I could understand, others I couldn't. Mm -hmm. So I went to a, a local school and asked them to translate them for me. Yeah. They said, yeah, we will for £10. I said, F*** that. <laughs> <laughs> Ten pounds. Ten pounds. That's a lot of money. I said, just tell me. No, they wouldn't. No. At the end of '63, I had works all tacos, so I never had to worry about it. You didn't have to worry about it. No. So they, you... they weren't the fastest. No. But they paid me a sum of money mm -hmm. at the end of the year for my race reports. So you got paid round by round, or just a lump sum at the end? Each race report, report I sent in. Yep. I was paid a sum of money for that. Yes. At the end of the year. Okay. And yeah. sometimes they gave me the bikes. Right. Really? As a, as a bonus, thank you, type thing. They gave yeah. me the uh, Ulster Grand Prix one mm -hmm. in 66. Yep. I sold it in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and then I bought it back years later and, and fixed it up, and I sold it in, in America for 60,000 American dollars. And welcome everybody to Historic News Spot. I'm John Tomlin, and joining me this week is Gary Grush, the current uh, Formula Libra single-seater champion, and we're here to talk about an exciting new Wings and Slicks class that will be running in the North Island over a four-round series this coming January and February. But first up, a couple of pieces of news. New BMW E30 scholarship winner is Josh Donoghue, 17-year-old student from Wellington. Josh has got an extensive background in uh, karting. Uh, he beat out 22 others at Pukekohe recently to take the title. Also announced that Dunlop will be the naming rights sponsor for the BMW E30 series this season, with all competitors running on a Dunlop control tyre. Switching to rallying, this year's Targa Rally, which will be the 25th anniversary of Targa, will be held over five days between the 29th of October and the 2nd of November. Starting in Taupo with two overnight stops in New Plymouth and overnight in Wanganui, finishing in Palmerston North. This year, Targa is introducing the Vintage Car Club Targa time trial, so we go back in time to the first few Targas where vintage cars competed. The big news is the newly formed Formula Open New Zealand series. And so at this stage, I'd like to introduce our current single-seater champion from the Matos Formula Libra series, Gary Rush. Welcome to the program, Gary. Hi, John. You've, you're running a, um, a Swift DB4. You've been running it in Formula Libra. Now, I believe you're going to be having a, you're the first one to put your name down for the new Formula Open series. Uh, Wellington Company has just gone and bought the um, 
remaining FT40 Tartus uh, TRS cars, and uh, they'll be le actually going to be leased out for the Formula Open class. There's seven of them going to be leased. Two of them are already spoken for. Uh, now. Talking to Kenny Smith, and you know Kenny's uh, racing with us in the series. He's, he raced against him last season. He tells me that uh, they're going to be about even on lap time. So it's going to be a bit of a battle because you've got six Formula Atlantics in there and seven uh, Tardis uh, TR. One's a ground effects car, is, which is the Atlantic, and of course the TRS cars, they're a big aero car. So what's the difference going to be? Essentially with the, the aero cars, they get some ground, uh, generate ground force from their wings to get extra grip on the wheels, but they don't have the same amount of drag as our cars. So the Tata 40s, they run a 1800 cc Toyota engine, mm. uh, which uh, twin cam, uh, which normally aspirated, fuel injected, only putting out around about 220 horse, where you guys are generating around about 250 out of a 1600. The Atlantics are uh, a lot highly strung. Um, you've got to rev them and work the gears constantly, small engine, not a lot of torque. So they're a real screamer. Uh, anything up nine and a half thousand be uh, conservative for us to keep them at. Well, there you go. They, I mean, look, that's uh, and that's just an indication of what's going to be happening in the series. And I tell you what, folks, it's certainly going to be worth coming out this year to watch it because that series is going to be fantastic. So, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Join us again uh, next time and for the news uh, here at uh, the HRC uh, news desk. Thank you.